Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect the ADS1256 port to an STM32 microcontroller. And uh, the board that I'm going to work with can be seen under the magnifying glass. So let me just move this away. So this guy here, which we are going to work with today, and uh, there is uh, there are a few differences between this board and these two other guys here and uh, i will explain that difference but uh, it's not a significant difference so we can work with this board uh, in the same way as we work with this or this guy here so as you can see i have already prepared the cables uh, for the connections and i already programmed this microcontroller and I needed to use the reset pin of the STM microcontroller, which you can see it here. So that's why I have a resistor connected here, but I will desolder it and uh, we will not need it anymore. And now it's not related to our concern. But uh, the only difference between, for example, these two boards and this board here is that uh, if you check the uh, digital pins, then uh, you will not find the PDWN pin, which is the bottom pin here. Uh, but instead of that, you will have a reset pin in our uh, software. We will not use uh, any of these pins. So if we use this board, we will not use the PDWN. And in our case, we will not use the reset pin. So all we have to do is that we have to connect it to the 3.3 volt uh, output of this uh, STM microcontroller. For example, in this uh, circuit, I did the same. So the 3.3 volt is connected to the PDWM pin and it is kept at that uh, all the time. So there is nothing that we do here. Otherwise, this is used for uh, like reset purposes and also to wake up or uh, put the device in some sort of uh, other modes than the regular mode. And uh, we just don't need to use that because uh, we just want to read and uh, that's all. So what we have here is basically, uh, we can see the pin layout uh, on the back of this uh, printed circuit board. And what we will need is basically the V in the one of the G and D. They are all connected to get, together, and we have uh, three. Uh, we will use, let's say, this one for the power, so the plus and minus basically. So we don't use too much uh, wires here. And then of course we use the D in S C L K uh, D R D Y uh, D out. Uh, reset, clock select, and sync. And uh, the GND here is uh, skipped because we use the GND up here. So I already prepared the wires, so I have some shorter wires because if I put the PCB here, then uh, I will use these pins which are closer to the to the board. And then I have the longer wires here, and if you if you compare it because they go to this corner of the microcontroller, but there is nothing fancy. It's up to you how you wire them. But uh, I want to keep a small distance between the two boards because I want to have a compact, compact uh, design. So this is how we proceed. So now I just uh, fire up the uh, soldering iron and I solder everything together. But before starting with the soldering, uh, let's go through the board uh, and the wiring again. So the V in is the five volt uh, connection. So that will go to the five volt of the Arduino. And this is not a high consumption device, so we can use it from the same uh, power source, but uh, maybe it's better to use an independent uh, power supply for this uh, uh, task. And then GND goes to one of the GND legs. And then the next leg is basically the D in. 
And in this case, uh, at least for the program which I use, it, it goes to the A7. Uh, and actually, that is also defined by the board because this is an SPI communication. And uh, one of the legs uh, for the SPI uh, is the A7. So the D in goes to the A, A7. And then the clock or SCLK uh, that goes to the A5 of this board here. And then we have uh, D, DR, DY. Uh, I made it to the A2. So basically there you have to define an attach interrupt pin wherever you can uh, define it. I wanted to keep it in this uh, side of the board. So I defined it as A2. And then we have D out. Again, an SPI pin. So that goes to A6. And then we have the reset pin. And as I explained it, uh, I will use a wire to connect it to the 3.3 .3, uh, volts all the time. And then uh, we have the CS, which is the chip select or slave select uh, pin. Again, SPI. And that goes to the A4 here. And the sync is basically uh, the same as the uh, PDWN. And uh, that goes to the same connection as the reset pin. So we just tie it to the 3.3 .3 volts. And uh, that's all. So sync and reset is basically connected together and uh, they go to the 3.3 .3 volts. And nothing else is needed. And as I said, the ground is already provided uh, up, up here. So now let's start the work. So the first part is completed. Uh, I struggled with some of the wires, but they are now inside the board as they should be. So basic, basically this is the communication part. And this is just uh, the power part. So these will uh, supply the power for the board and uh, these will uh, take care of the communication between the two devices. So now I just, uh, continue with the soldering according to the layout of the pins here. So what I do is just uh, basically connect these, all of these.
So I finished with the soldering. I did one uh, bridge here uh, to connect the reset and the sync uh, pins to the same 3.3 volts uh, voltage. Then I just cut off all these uh, small bits of wires. Seems more or less clean. And then you can see that it takes up very small space. So this is how it looks. And now I will go to my computer and uh, connect it. And also I just quickly attach uh, two wires uh, to the first channel so I can measure some voltages. But uh, basically this is the finalized uh, circuit. And uh, then this will be put in a metal box or metal enclosure. So let's go to the computer and see if it works.